Excellent. Well, welcome everybody on Wednesday, wherever you are across the world. My name is Edward Ianel, and I will be the host of today's session. With me today, we have Miska and Mario from Team Lens. Miska heads up our um, engineering and product here at Marantis. He's the vice president of product. And Mario heads up our engineering team for Lens, the Kubernetes platform that you all are probably very much familiar with. So today, what we are going to be doing is we are going to have a panel discussion where we talk about what is Lens, what is Lens 6, the awesome new features, how people can be using Lens. And then towards the end of today's session, we'll actually go into some form of demo that Mario's prepared for us to really take a look at some of the new exciting features that are within Lens 6 and so forth. So if everybody's okay with that, without further ado, we will get started. Um, I would like to ask the audience, please ask questions at any point. We do wanna make this more of a panel discussion and we do wanna to have to take this opportunity to answer any questions that each of you may have. So I wanna make that um, clear right now. So please, in the comments, it, please just share with us any questions you may have regarding Lens, regarding Marantis, regarding us, um, really any questions you may have, we are more than excited to try and answer each and every single one of them. Cool, so let's begin. As most of you probably know, this is a discussion on what's new with Lens, the vision for Lens, and what's new within Lens 6 itself. So without further ado, I'm going to start, start off by chatting just a bit with Miska on, really, Miska, what is Lens 6? When did this release happen? And how is this awesome or great for the cloud native ecosystem? Yeah, hey, Edward and everybody uh, in this call. Uh, so Lens 6 is basically the end result of, of, uh, of a product basically that we started developing already several years ago. So we had this uh, desire basically to remove all the complexity that the developers are facing when, when they have to deal with the cloud native technologies. We felt that using Kubernetes was not so pleasant experience when you have to deal with all these command line tools and, and 20 different dashboards and, and whatnots. So we wanted to create this kind of one integrated development environment where, where developers will get kind of more productive and, and uh, faster time to value. So, so that was the origin. So now the Lens 6 is of course the greatest and the best version on, on this journey where we are. Uh, it comes with a tons of new features like, like uh, we have been adding uh, security capabilities. We have been adding uh, desktop Kubernetes capabilities in the product and overall improved the experience all around the product uh, to help us to achieve that state where, where we can eliminate the most of the complexity when it comes to cloud native uh, development. And, and Lens has been you know, adopted by a lot of users. So we have, I think, close to 700,000 users already around the globe, which is majority of the cloud native developers, as we, as we can see it. Uh, many of the users, they are using Lens already today. Uh, so, that's basically what Lens is. It's, it's an end result of, of uh, countless hours of development work trying to make the world a better place for, for all the software developers building cloud native applications. Absolutely. And, and to your best knowledge, Miska, what do you believe majority of the people that are using Lens use it for? Well, there are these kind of two big groups of users and segments, as we can see it. So, as we know, many of the users, uh, they are still kind of learning the cloud native uh, world and how to develop applications, how to debug app applications, how to get application logs and, and, and those type of things. Uh, Lens is extremely useful for anybody who is just getting started because it will just make it so more intuitive uh, to get on board it. Another group of, uh, or which is kind of the big segment for us is also this very, very experienced developers. They know exactly how to use cute cuttles and everything, but they get tired of using this, typing in the same comments over and over again. Uh, so they enjoy the convenience of Lens. It will simplify their life. Uh, 
So, so that's pretty much those two big user groups for, for Lens. Absolutely, absolutely. And maybe our audience can share, um, they mentioned that the chat is disabled, but we still have the Q&A where many people shared where they are from. Maybe the audience can also share how you use Lens. I'm sure Mario and Miska are quite interested as well. Um, as all of you begin to put in your questions, um, I'm going to actually ask Miska another question here, which is specific to um, what is the biggest change? Or actually, no, let's take a step back. Instead of asking the biggest change with Lens 6, before we get there, I think all of us would be quite interested in what the vision is for Lens for the future. Where do you see Lens going? Is it going to remain a desktop application? Do you want to integrate with other cloud native tools? I'm sure the audience is very curious on Yes, you've released awesome features, great releases, but what's the vision in your eyes for Lens for the future? <clears throat> yeah, so I think I have been also sharing some of these thoughts in, in, in my blog post uh, that came out with the Lens 6 release. So, so we really, we have the three big kind of uh, initiatives or, or directions uh, that we want to double down on and, and kind of invest heavily more uh, when we go to the future. So first of all, uh, we want to make Lens for web browsers as well. We feel that there are many user groups that would, even though a desktop application is, is from the performance perspective, perspective it's the it's the ultimate solution but but we know that there are many kind of users out there who would still kind of benefit from using something like lens in their web browsers so so that's something that what we want to do we also want to build at the same time build uh, lens for mobiles and tablets and you might be wondering why why would i need something like this on my mobile uh, so <laughs> So it's it's not necessarily for the reason that you want to go go check you know some logs or something you know with your mobile phone, but but perhaps you wanna as a developer you wanna set some threshold for your own application and and set some notifications to come to you you know when your application is running somewhere and receive notifications when certain parameters and and thresholds are surprised. So in that case, the mobile and tablets actually becomes very meaningful. Uh, second uh, area where we want to invest is uh, basically taking Lens beyond Kubernetes. Uh, so, of course, the cloud native thing, it started with Kubernetes or it, it was built around the idea of having Kubernetes there in the center. But uh, now we have so many different things that integrate with Kubernetes. So we want to make and expand the capabilities of Lens in those areas as well, like CI, CD, pipelines, GitOps. Uh, basically, if you think about you are seeing your workloads running in your cube clusters. So imagine if you could take it all the way back. By the way, I can see your cat there. <laughs> yeah, so, it's a, it's a it's a baby kid, and she's hanging out with me today. All right, um, early right. morning. So I I do apologize to everybody. She, no, she's no, pretty no. cute. I'll, I'll have her say hi real quick. Um, she's gone. No, there she right, goes. Right. Okay, cool. So, Sorry, so Mishka. Just trying to, if you can imagine taking, looking at the, any kind of workloads you are running in, in your cube cluster, and if you can basically start drilling down or actually taking abstractions above and looking at how did this workload actually end up running in my cluster? What was the CI CD pipeline that was used to build this? Uh, what are the built logs uh, from these workloads? Uh, so all the way back to the source code level. So, so that's where we want to uh, invest heavily on, on to build these integrations. And also, of course, we, we have this, soon we have 1 million users, you know, we, we are, you know, maybe one year from now, we had 2 million users. So ultimately we want to make it even more easy for our users to collaborate, share things amongst each other, you know. Uh, so, so we are looking at ways how to, how to improve the collaboration between our users. So those are the three big areas that, uh, that we want to be investing. Understood. Understood. And I imagine collaboration can happen in various different ways, um, even when you're actually not directly collaborating with a colleague or a friend and so forth. One of the ways I think of 
collaboration or this third tier of item is maybe some form of marketplace where people can integrate with all kinds of different cloud native technologies, be able to plug them in directly through Lens um, and so forth. Is this also something that you think of when it comes to collaboration or is this something a little different? Yeah, I think a very good analogy in here is that, uh, that uh, by the way, I'm a huge fan of gaming. I, I'm playing with PS5 basically every night and, and I'm, I'm very much into gaming. So, so for example, from the gaming industry, if you look at tools like, uh, like Unity, uh, for example, so, so they have the asset store and basically those components and assets that are made available through the asset store. And by the way, some of them might be free of charge. Uh, some of them might be, might be, you know, paid, you know, but anyway, right. those kind of components and assets that are made for, for these game developers, they are just, you know, increasing their productivity, time to value. Uh, so we are looking at how to create something similar, but, but uh, in the context of the cloud native, how can we accelerate work so that there is a lot of duplicate works done now at the moment in this cloud native industry how we can remove that and uh, make this information more accessible or the resources assets more accessible uh, those are the topics understood understood maybe the audience can share a little bit with us what they would like the future of lens to be um, we're always curious and one of the things that we do here at team lens is continuously gather feedback for our users and implement that directly into our roadmap. So um, if anybody has any maybe feature requests, maybe Mario's not going to love this one, but <laughs> any feature requests, any bugs, um, any ideas for the vision of Lens, we'd love to read them. This is something that we're all very much interested in from a day-to-day -day basis. So directly in the Q&A area, feel free to add your comments, suggestions, and so forth. But this bring, begins to bring me to the next topic where, you know, we talked about how Lens has developed We've talked about the vision for Lens. Now, maybe let's talk a little bit about where Lens is today. And specifically what I mean by that is our most recent release, Lens 6. Um, before transitioning to Mario here, Miska, do you have a couple of words that you'd like to share with the audience about Lens 6, the differences with Lens 6, how it impacts our audience, or shall we begin to transition into some of the awesome features within Lens now? <clears throat> yeah, perhaps for this audience, the the biggest change notable change of course that came with with lens uh was that uh we for the first time ever kind of created two two kind of tiers or two different versions of lens so so we wanted to keep the lens how people have been used to play around with lens in the past so that product is currently called uh, lens personal so it has all the capabilities that you would need to, to kind of accelerate your workflows and, and get familiar with, with Kubernetes and cloud native development and, and, uh, and all the functionality that used to be in the lens before. But in addition, we have been uh, creating a new uh, product, uh, which is a lens pro that comes even more functionality. And the reason for this is of course that uh, we have tens of engineers working full time on making lens the better, you know, every day. And we need to also find some ways how to finance this. Uh, it's not a charity. We are not the Santa Claus. You know, I don't have elves there, you know, building this product for me. So, so we have real people, engineers who are working for this, you know, very hard and uh, we need to pay their salary. So this is our first kind of, um, kind of commercial offering also for the lens product itself. Uh, that will help us to, to make the further development and maintaining the lens product how it is today uh, more sustainable. So that's the, of course the biggest change that now we have these two kind of versions of lens, the lens personal and lens pro with more features. Uh, and secondly, of course, the, the, when it comes down to the features itself. So obviously when we launch something like Lens Pro, so it has to also come with some pretty cool new features. And, uh, and uh, that's what we did. So, so, so perhaps, that's, perhaps that's the kind of the overview of the, of the Lens 6. Absolutely. And that uh, creates a perfect <clears throat> path forward to bring in Mario. Um, Mario, 
Real quick, what are your thoughts on Lens 6 compared to other releases? And then I'll follow up with some of asking you what are some of the new awesome features within Lens. Hey, hey everyone. Um, thanks, Edward, for passing it over to me. So, yeah, I think it's probably the most exciting and interesting release that we had that we ever had. And um, it's adding a lot of very useful new features on, on, on top of what we had right now, especially with, with Lens Pro for sure. And um, I think in, in the future, I mean, this is just the first starting point, right? And in the future, we will work on improving those things even further. Um, this will really massively help um, people to ease up things and um, yeah, improve their inner development cycle and their, their workflow on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, especially, I'm super excited, for example, about Lens Desktop Cube, right? <clears throat> so with Lens Desktop Cube, I have basically everything integrated into, into my, my Lens application now that I need for implementing yeah, cloud native applications together with Visual Studio Code for sure. And I can just yeah, build and run or I can run my applications directly within my cluster and see how do they behave, how are they working together and um, yeah scale them out and, and test around, right? So before I had to yeah, plug together a couple of different tools. I had to have my, my mini cube somewhere around and then, or my rancher desktop or whatever. And now I have, uh, yeah, everything basically completely integrated in, in one solution. And I think that that is making it super easy for me as an engineer as well, working on our own solutions. Understood, understood. So what I understand from this is now within Lens Pro, our users actually have access to a local development environment that they can leverage. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's it. So you, you have the option to configure um, this development environment. So we are basically spinning up a virtual machine on your, on your computer. And um, this virtual machine can be configured so you can define uh, the memory, uh, the CPU resources that you want to dedicate to this virtual machine. And then we are bringing up um, our um, our own Kubernetes distribution, K-Zeros, that is uh, developed by, by one of our teams here at Mirantis. We are spinning it up and then um, we are directly visualizing it within Lens as you're used to it. So you can then connect to it using, using Lens or you can even use your usual terminal in the kubectl in order to inter interact with it. And for example, here at Team Lens for implementing our backend applications, we are relying on tools like Scaffold, for example, for deploying everything to our cluster. So um, once there is a new service, it will be added into the um, Scaffold configuration YML. And then uh, when, when new engineer starts working on our backend services, then um, this engineer will just uh, uh, use Scaffold in order, to, in order to deploy all the beautiful services into, into their local clusters and they can immediately get started working on those services. Understood, understood. And you mentioned the VM. This is running directly in the desktop application. Where is this VM running? Yeah, this, uh, this virtual machine is running on your local computer. So it depends a little bit on whether you have a Windows machine or you have a Linux, a Mac. Um, so on, on Windows, we are leveraging WSL2. So when, when you give it, when you want to give it a try, um, I'd recommend you to, um, uh, first of all, install WSL2 and make sure that it's enabled in your um, BIOS as well. The virtualization needs to be, needs to be enabled upfront, but we have guidelines and documentation around that um, on, on our um, website and there, there's FAQs. So we can absolutely help you with that. And if you're in trouble, then you can always use as well our new support feature and you can reach out to, to our support team in order to get help with that if, it, if it's not working for you. Well, since you mentioned the feature, um, I'm going to ask you a little bit about it. What is this new support feature that you're describing? And is it available on Lens Personal, Lens Pro? Um, what is it? Yeah. So yeah, the, the support feature that we have right now, um, it's hmm. fully integrated into um, the product and it's available with Lens Pro. You can as well give it a try um, if, you, if you are on the Pro trial that we are offering for 30 days. And it's basically a uh, 24 times five commercial support that 
that will be at your fingertips for getting help with anything related to lens, right? And uh, then, yeah, if you want to go to your support portal for, for managing your yeah, support cases, you can just go to, uh, to our website and uh, yeah, get, access, get access to your personal support portal for looking up uh, historical support cases. Understood, understood. So my understanding from this is Lens Pro users will have the ability to access a real-time agent directly in the desktop application yep. um, any time between Monday through Friday, so a work week, um, and they will be able to hopefully resolve any questions, concerns, um, bugs, issues that a user may be facing. Yep, exactly. And uh, so those folks, for sure, they are directly in touch with our engineers. And um, if there is any bugs, then we obviously try to rule them out as soon as possible. And um, yeah. Understood. Understood. Well, actually, at this point, we got a question specifically on another um, feature within Lens Pro. And sorry, my cat jumped up on me again. But um, this feature is specific to our security feature, which is container security. So we were asked a question directly in, the, in our Q&A. But before getting to that question, maybe you could introduce this feature to us. Um, container security, what this is, is it a multi-feature um, feature within Lens itself? What is the container security? Yep, yeah, container security, as you said, is just, a, it's, it's another uh, great feature that we added uh, as part of the Lens Pro, uh, Pro, Pro subscription. And it will help you to get better understanding about vulnerabilities potentially appearing in your container images, right? So um, it, it has capabilities to allow engineers in a context-aware environment uncover security vulnerabilities very early in the development cycle. So for us in the past, the problem was that we for sure had kind of central dashboards where we, where we were able to um, get an idea of, are there any uh, vulnerabilities, CVEs reported for the images or for the dependencies that we are using. But um, it was always kind of yeah, a bit inconvenient because we had to go to this central um, tooling somewhere and we had to figure out, is there something going on that, that should have our attention, right? And now with this feature directly in Lens, it's... Um, it's like totally um, obvious to us when, when there is something, right? And we will immediately get informed in our day-to-day -day workflow um, about any CVE reports that are within one of the images that I'm using in my cluster. And to be very clear, we do not want to replace uh, any of those solutions, those very central image scanners. I think they are going probably even way more into the weeds, right? And I think it's totally fine, but what we want to do instead is give you as an engineer the opportunity to um, get more insights about what's going on directly in your day-to-day -day workflow. And then you can dive deeper with all the other beautiful tools that you have at, at hand that are absolutely tailored to, to do exactly the image scanning and reporting. Understood, understood, that's very helpful. So it's very much complementing um, the current process within the central IT department, right, of being able to scan your images yep. um, from a centralized location. This is really bringing it a little much closer to that shift left moment where developers, engineers actually have the ability to uncover these flaws earlier in the development cycle. Yeah, as an understood. engineer, I just don't want to switch tools every, every, every I don't know, 100 Constantly. times an hour, you know? <laughs> But I right. just want to work with my three to five tools, and 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 that's about it, right? And and this actually goes specifically towards the Lens Pro release, where we release several features that actually begin to mitigate the amount of tools you have to use, right? Lens Desktop Kubernetes, you may no longer need to use yeah. Rancher Desktop. Um, then we also have the Container Security feature. You may be able to, un or you will uncover flaws earlier in the development cycle. You don't have to switch from context to context. Um, also, having the support in app, you don't need to go to the web browser. You don't need to file a Jira ticket. So we are trying to minimize exactly. and mitigate the amount of steps our users have to take 
when it comes to all of these different features and so forth. Um, very much understood, Mario. Well, we do have a question specific to the container security feature um, directly in our q and I'm going to ask you this. I'm not going to read the entire question, but long story short, they're, they're asking whether or not we can scan images and see CVE vulnerability reporting from a private image repository. Very, very good question. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually possible. Um, what we are doing is we are, um, so the scanning is happening on your local machine and um, we are using the uh, image pool um, secret that is, uh, it, that is stored in your cluster in order to authenticate against your private um, image repository. For sure, that doesn't apply for all clusters. Um, for example, with uh, AWS uh, ECR, it is a little bit different, but we have, I think, very good FAQs already um, on our website. So um, just check uh, how, how, how it works. And yeah, as well, if there's anything that, that we can help you with, then feel free to reach out to our support team. Understood. Maybe I can add also one, one comment in here. Uh, so Please, Miska. Yeah, so so there are two ways how this uh, actually this image scanning can work and, and how how these results are actually uh, surfaced in the lens. So, of course, the first option is that uh, that you can manually go and click your images and scan those images and, and get the results, you know, on, on spot. Uh, second option is that uh, if your registry where those images are actually coming from is providing some sort of image scanning uh, capabilities. So that's the kind of secondary source uh, where this uh, CV information um, might be retrieved from. And the third option is that that is the kind of the most bulletproof solution for retrieving. It doesn't then, in this case, it doesn't even anymore matter where those images are really coming from. So it's, uh, if you install the starboard uh, in your cluster, so then the scanning happens in cluster and uh, Lens is able to retrieve the CV scanning information directly uh, from there. So, so those are the kind of the three options that what what we have been making available today. Yep. Understood. Thanks for adding this. Yeah, we're we're running an operator in your cluster. Then, if you if you want this, and um, this will scan the images, right, Miska? Yeah, but the the running this operator, it's not mandatory. So it's just, exactly you know, we we might need to improve our documentation. But there are there are plenty of features in Lens. Uh, not all of them are even documented. But we have been for sure thinking about all these kind of different corner cases as well. Understood. That's very helpful. Well, we do have a couple of questions in the, the Q&A currently that I think is good to get to before we move towards the demo session, um, if everybody's okay with that. But one of the questions here is, will K0S be included in open lens or is it a pro feature? Miska, maybe that is a question, a good question for you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so so K zeros, of course, it's it's an open source open source project by its own merit already, right? So so nothing's gonna change in there. So K zeros, it's gonna be certified, you know, bistro made by Team Lens as well, but but it's a it's a separate kind of team open source project from from Lens. So what is happening with with Lens is that uh, we are just integrating that open source pro, uh, project into Lens and that packaging is going to be happening in this Lens Pro version. But but if you want to use the open source, you know, vanilla k zeros from the upstream, there is nothing stopping anybody from doing so. It's exactly the same product. So what we are doing for Lens, Lens Pro is adding a lot of convenience adding this ability for you to run it you know locally on your desktop by bundling it with the vm technologies and uh, and we are also going to be integrating the command line tool uh, components uh, in the near future into lens for for you to actually even create those clusters uh, from lens um, so that's pretty much what we are aiming to do with k zeros understood Yes, so just to piggyback off of that, 
Um, K0S is open source. You can download it today, get started with it, do it via command line. It takes almost a minute or so to actually deploy a single node K0S cluster. You can leverage it through Lens Pro, which bundles it, as Miska mentioned, with the VM so it can run locally um, just through the desktop application. But we also have a very cool feature within Lens Pro as well, which is our teamwork and collaboration feature, um, formerly named Lens Spaces, which actually allows you to access a managed hosted dev cluster as well. So if you want a development environment that's running in the cloud, this is also operating from K0S. You have the ability to deploy this cluster where it's not leveraging your local resources from your machine. So um, that's another option as well if you're interested in offloading some of those resources away from your local machine and into the cloud, you have that ability as well. And since we're touching on this topic real quick, Mario, maybe you could share a little bit with this audience I have a feeling many people have not taken a look at Lens Spaces or Lens Teamwork and Collaboration and maybe <clears throat> share with this audience what that feature is. And maybe each of you can share in the Q&A session whether or not you're familiar with um, Lens Teamwork and Collaboration. Yep. So Teamwork and Collaboration um, is a feature we already introduced a couple of months ago, right? And this will allow you to share your clusters with one or more of your colleagues, pretty much similar to how you can share access to a Google Drive document. And um, technically it's working the way that um, we are yeah, sending out an invite to your colleague um, via email and you will create your, you will create an lens ID, which is, which is basically your account to, to access um, all the beautiful lens features. And you can then um, see that cluster as part of a so-called space, right? And uh, then when, when working on your cluster, you can see uh, similar to how it is as well, again, with uh, Google Drive, you can see your colleagues and um, that, that are as well working on that cluster. And you no longer have to share cube configs or open uh, firewall ports in order to grant access to your to your clusters so that can be very helpful for example if you have problem with your local kubernetes cluster with your development environment and you need some help from a colleague you could really quickly um, just give him access to this to this um, cluster with yeah a, one or a couple of clicks and um, yeah you don't need to dig any holes into your firewall or you don't need to send your cube configs to to this uh, to this colleague and as well for sure for your staging and, and development clusters or maybe even your your production clusters if you want to share them with your with your team and it's uh yeah it's it enables you to to do our back role-based access control and um yeah we are we are basically handling just the authentication and the entire traffic is completely encrypted with a with a private key that is generated in your cluster so it's uh, very secure and um yeah but as well i wanted to mention for this feature that it's totally optional you do not have to share anything with your collaborate with your colleagues and and you you do not have to use that feature i think that was something that was raised a couple of times in in the past in the community and there's been a couple of concerns because maybe we didn't have the best uh uh yeah ux in the in the first place and now we improved uh, uh on that and and now we have it uh, very clearly separated this feature from from your local computer just uh so that there is no confusion around what is being shared um, um with us and, and whatnot and yeah maybe that is really important for me then I, that, I, that to mention yeah we are we are not going to share any of your cube configs if you if you're not uh if you're not want this right and this will never Absolutely. be the case Absolutely, Mario, and thank you for the <clears throat> explanation of the feature itself. I do want I to share a use case. Go yeah, ahead, Miska. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have been because I think, because I think this is truly transformational. This feature, it's something yes. that it's really yes. hard to even describe in words. Because I believe that this feature alone is, if I think about my team of engineers, what we have, you know, tens of engineers working on on all kind of backend projects. So. This is probably the single most important feature of Lens for, for my entire team. 
So I'm, I'm sure that all of you guys who are here, and if you are working with Kubernetes clusters, and especially, you know, if you are working on environments like Amazon and EKS, so those clusters are incredibly difficult to access, you know, with your cube cattle. Yes. You yes. need to do so many, you know, you are opening tunnels, you are going through jump boxes, you are doing all this and that, you know, and it's incredibly inconvenient. So basically imagine a world where this in, all this inconvenience is basically taken away and it's just pure bliss, you know, accessing those clusters and it's all done securely. It's end-to-end -end encrypted. It fully respects the Kubernetes RBAC, but none of these, you know, you don't have any of these hassles of, uh, of uh, what is typically, you know, related to when you're running right. clusters behind multiple flat firewalls and, and stuff like that. So, so that's really, at least personally for me, this is, this is kind of a game changer feature uh, personally. Uh, I, couldn't live, I couldn't live without this feature, <laughs> to be honest. Yes, and, and I want to mention a use case here for everybody to really take in what has been shared is um, I have a team of developers that need to ask, access specific services within a namespace. I can easily share a Kubernetes cluster securely and to end encrypted with my team in a click of a button and ensure that these developers are only having access to a specific namespace. So it's awesome for giving your developers access to specific services running in your clusters via namespace, or if you have a support individual that needs to come in and take a look at why your cluster is not performing properly. There's so many, <clears throat> excuse me, different use cases here that allow you to really share the cluster easily, quickly, as well as revoke access from anybody within seconds. And this is something that we don't see too much in our space where once you have a cube config, file, I mean, you have access to that cluster. And yeah, there's various different hoops you can jump through to remove that access, but you very much do have access to that cluster. With Lens Spaces, we give you a secure environment that allows you to grant and revoke access to a cluster, ensuring your developers are also working in the correct namespace, accessing the logs they're supposed to be accessing, and so forth. So it's a fantastic feature. Um, we have several more questions in the Q&A, but before that, Maybe what we can do, and Greg, we will answer all of your questions. No reason to apologize for all these questions. We very much love it and want to answer as many questions as possible. So we'll absolutely get to that. But Mario, maybe if you have your environment open, you can actually demonstrate a couple here <clears throat> so our audience can see um, what it looks like um, in real time. And again, this is live. I doubt we'll have any issues, but every time we do a live demo, you know, sometimes the demo gods want it to fail. So, um, oh, excellent. Go ahead. Thanks, Thanks Edward, for the disclaimer. Uh, and yeah, yeah, usually if you're doing live demo, something eventually will go wrong, right? <laughs> so, yes. All good. So, yeah, let's, let's take a quick look. So, yeah, I have a Lens Pro here uh, on, my, on my machine, right? Um, it's registered for me. And um, you can see then after you got the subscription from, from our website or the trial, you can see that you get this new features here in the, in the bottom, uh, in the status bar, as we call it. And I already started now my uh, LDK, Lens Desktop Cube. Um, you have uh, settings in, in, in the app preferences. You have uh, settings, as I said, uh, in order to configure the resources that you want to dedicate to this uh, virtual machine that we are spinning up on your computer. So um, depending on your machine size, you can give it more or less, and you can uh, configure the Kubernetes version. And um, yeah, but then after uh, starting it, it's downloading the um, uh, virtual machine uh, image uh, from from our, uh, yeah, from from our CDNs, right. And we're spinning up that 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 VM for you, we're installing k zeros into it. And uh, we're putting the um, cube config into your um, cube folder. And that, yeah, that means that it will uh, be appearing here on, on the cluster list. And as well, you can use it from your terminal if you want to directly interact with, with that cluster using good old kubectl, right? Now, after connecting to it, um, it just looks like any other cluster, right? Um, it's running on a single node, um, single node 
virtual machine right now. And uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, this is, uh, yeah, k zeros 1, 23, 8. And I can now use scaffold or, or, or whatever tools I want to use in order to bring up my local development environment. Just for uh, having an example at hand, I can, for example, install some Nginx Helm chart um, in order to, to get started. I would just put it to the default namespace. And um, then after running it, it's at your service and you can start working on your on your cluster right and that already brings me to our next feature that is part of lens pro and this is the capability as i explained before to scan the used images for any vulnerabilities right and you have this new button here in the pot details pane that will um, manually start the image scanning process and in the bottom here, down here, as we, as I explained, completely in your day-to-day -day workflow integrated in a context, in, as a context-aware, um, in a context-aware scenario, you can see the vulnerabilities that we might potentially have been detecting. All right, and um, yeah. Now, looking into the details, clicking on that image, you can see exactly the CVEs from here. And um, now you can start taking actions, right? And if you click them, it will, uh, it will even give you more details in your, in your browser about this CVE. And um, we will send you to some CVE database where, where you can gain more, gather more information about uh, uh, what's going on with this image and, and why does it have any vulnerabilities? Is there maybe a newer version that you can update to and so on and so forth, right? Understood, understood. Um, you took a look at two features, Mario. You took a look at the Lens Desktop Cube. You took a look at Lens Container Security. Um, how do you get started with support? Yeah, very good question. We have that support button here in the bottom. And um, as you can see, this will open up this modal here. And you can immediately now start chatting with our support agents. You can um, upload files um, if you want to share anything that that's maybe not working, or if you have any uh, any any issues in the UI that you want to share as a screenshot with with our support team. And um, yeah, that's that's almost about it. And we will come back to you here in in only a couple of minutes usually. And um, when when it takes more time for us to answer questions, then we will uh, yeah ask you to be a little bit patient and hopefully after a couple of minutes or hours if it's a more complex problem we will reach out to you by by email so this is directly connected to your lens id and um you can you can start the cases from here start chatting and if it's a more complex problem then we will open a support ticket for you and we will be we will stay in touch with you via your um uh your configured email address Understood, understood. That, that's extremely helpful. So as Mario shared with this group, um, this is Lens Pro. Each of these features are within Lens Pro. Um, before getting to our next part where I, I want to just ensure some questions that haven't come up are answered, which I think are very important for the audience. Um, we do have some questions from the audience themselves. So Mario, I'm not sure if you have access to our Q&A, but the last question that we have not answered was at 7.28 a.m. That's, I don't know, 5.30, 5.28 p.m. for you by Greg M. Um, do you have access to it or do you want me to just read them out loud to you? Uh, would be great if you could read them out. Um, sure. I, where, sure. where is that? Maybe I can get access to them. Yeah, now I got access to them. So Greg M is asking, um, we, we no longer, if we no longer need Rancher Desktop, can Lens Desktop also disabled k zeros but at the same time keep Mobi running for local docker development uh i'm not entirely sure if i if i get the question but um if it if this is about container runtime then 
Uh, yes, for sure, this thing is coming as well with a container runtime in that virtual machine. Um, and because obviously you need some container runtime for running containers, right? And uh, that's that's the case, but um, yeah, you don't, it's, it's not yet entirely an official feature, but theoretically you can get access to that daemon that is running in there. Maybe maybe to add on there, so it will become also configurable. So yeah. in the future, it will be possible to run also if you are only kind of interested in doing container development. So yeah. so you can be doing only that if you want. That is, I think, exactly the question, right? So as you can see, I can do Docker PS here in my in my terminal, right? And I can see um, all the things running in my cluster, right? Um, but right now it's not as a standalone thing available. Hmm. But yes. very good question. Yeah. Yeah, and that's coming anyway. That's on our roadmap already. It's identified as an issue because not everybody wants to run K zeros. They just want to have the you know Docker engine uh, for some reason, and yep. that will become just a configurable op option. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you both Mario and Miska for answering this one. It looks like Greg has another question um, right under the question you just answered, Mario. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So anchor twist lock OpenStack integration um, with your current pipeline system will be supported. You alluded to, to this, just wondering which scan tools will be supported. So right now it's so that we are using um, Trivi scanner under the hood for doing the scanning of your images, right? Um, there are, Miska, you as well mentioned other integrations um, for, for uh, that, that we have integrated. Maybe you can talk a little bit more yep. about that. I, I don't, I don't yep. have all the information yep. at hand. Yep, yep. So, so initial for the 6.0 kind of the current release that is shipping today, so, we haven't been able to add all the integrations what we wanted kind of initially so what we have been building in the product already today so we can support uh, of course the mirantis own image registry the msr that is the mirantis secure registry uh, so the scanning results may be retrieved from there but we are not yet supporting uh, some other you know some sneak or or some others uh at the moment if it's about the switching the scanner so that's not the integrated scanner is a trivi so it's not possible to change that to anything else understood understood well i believe we answered all questions um unless somebody else sees another question that we did not answer um, we are currently nine minutes out so what i would like to do real quick is actually share my screen and share with this audience where you can access specific resources to either get started with Lens Pro, read more about Lens Pro and, and so forth. And while I put this screen up, I'll be talking about several other things as well. And I'm sure Miska and Mario may, may chime in, but here, let me know if you all can see my screen. I imagine you can. Yes, it works, all good. So I, I want to ensure everybody that this slide will be emailed to everybody so they can access the latest and greatest of Lens 6, as well as learn more about this and so forth. I've also dropped these links directly in the chat box currently. Um, there's a couple of things I definitely wanna go over with the audience today before ending our call. And that's specific to um, Lens Personal and Lens Pro and also Open Lens. So Lens is built based off of Open Lens and we are the primary maintainers and contributors to that open source project. Um, Lens Personal is going to be remaining free for personal use, small businesses, and so forth. So I want to make that very clear that um, you still can absolutely access Lens Personal for free on a day-to-day -day basis, dependent on um, what you're, you're using Lens for and the organization you work within. Then we have Lens Pro, again, also based off of this open source project, Open Lens, that we contribute to and maintain. Um, we, we really do all of it, 99.9%. Uh, of the contributions are, are done by Team Lens and Marantis. But if you would like to get started with Lens Pro, 
there's actually a free trial that you can leverage. You don't need to enter any credit card information to get started with Lens Pro. You can do so directly through the desktop application. A pop-up screen will come up. You'll choose the subscription you would like to use. Again, Lens Pro trials free, no credit card needed. And if you do want to move forward with Lens Pro, um, we have a founder's coupon for all of our Lens users that have been leveraging Lens um, previously. And that coupon will give them 50% off Lens Pro um, regardless if you do a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription, which I think is extremely important, allowing our users to leverage Lens Pro for the minimal viable cost possible. And um, we also have our Slack channel here. And one of the best documents you can leverage to answer any of the questions you may have is our FAQ doc, which we've also shared here. Miska and Mario, is there anything you want to add for the comments that I just brought up? I'm, I'm sure there may be something, Miska, um, that you may want to bring up, or did I cover everything? Well, I think the best way to learn about this, of course, is just to go to our website and download the thing and, and try it out. So <laughs> that's that's the best way to, to learn about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, to all of our users, um, behalf of the entire team, I want to thank each of you for being a Lens user, being a part of our community, continuing to leverage Lens for your cloud native development environments. Um, operating your Kubernetes clusters, accessing logs, whatever the use case may be for Lens, we do truly want to thank you. Um, we couldn't be where we are here today without our users. So thank you also for joining us today. I know everybody's quite busy and we're all across the world in different various parts and regions. So again, thank you for taking time out of your day to be with Team Lens. And we hope we answered some awesome features, questions and so forth. And give Lens Pro a try and let us know what you think directly in the Slack channel. You can find me there, you can find Mario there, you can find Miska there, and you can find the entire development team there. Once again, thank you so much and have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday. Bye-bye.